Howdy everyone, Waffles2 here. After the embarrassing debacle last time where uh, Mission Control lost contact with their mission for, oh, about a month while uh, Jerrican was busy accomplishing all manner of things, uh, we've decided to build a communications network around Kerbin uh, so we can relay comms back to uh, Mission Command from any point around Kerbin, as long as it's not blocked by the planet itself. Boy, the, uh, the new sound effects for the uh, solid rocket boosters from the KW Rocket Group pack sure sound crunchy. I kind of like the new, uh, kind of like it. Anyway, here we are. We're uh, chasing a slightly different flight profile from our usual. Um, you see, or even the last time we built a comms network. Um, you see, there's no one home. This thing is completely remote controlled from mission control. So it is... <clears throat> absolutely vital that mission control not go we you know, we not go over the horizon or we'll lose control of our rocket so we're going to take a very very steep ascent profile up to our target altitude uh, which will put us out at geos geostationary orbit it's not really necessary to build a comms network at geostationary in uh, in the game um, because uh, Remote Tech 2 and the earlier Remote Tech just doesn't model uh, tracking and, and all that stuff that you know, we have to deal with here in real life. But it's still kind of handy for a number of reasons. One, um, it's easy to remember the orbital period, six hours, which is equal to uh, Kerbin's rotation. Two, the bigger diameter your orbit is, the longer it takes for small errors to show up. So it's just kind of handy to put it oh, oh, two, between 2 and 3 million uh, meters up anyway, just for that reason. And, like I was explaining uh, last season, uh, with the pellet, when I did the, use the Pelican to construct a comms network, uh, it makes it easy to figure out how much you need to speed up or slow down uh, a satellite's orbit by to, uh, to correct its positioning. Um, at a six, you know, at geo state or Kerbo stationary orbit, if you insist, <clears throat> uh, one uh, one minute equal one minute uh, of orbit difference equals one degree of adjustment forward or back. So, if you know how much you need to correct by, all you need to do is alter the orbital period by that much. And speaking of last season, anyone who uh, <laughs> who's saw basically the pilot to that and was expecting more, I'm I'm really sorry. Uh, what happened is the Kraken descended upon my save file and uh, parked a ship destroying entity right on mission control. I couldn't take anything off. I couldn't land anything. Um, everything exploded on the runway or on the launch pad before the physics loaded and I couldn't fix it so I I had to abandon the playthrough and in frustration I just quit shooting videos um, so I'm sorry if anyone was interested in that but what are you gonna do anyway we're about to release the first of our satellite or no we're gonna circular or mostly circularize our orbit uh, we're gonna bring it to a five hour period uh, the reason is there's going to be a total of six satellites in the comms network, <clears throat> and it's a six. We want uh, in geostationary or kerbostationary is a six-hour period, and we want all six evenly spaced. So, if our uh, bus vehicle's period is five hours, one one hour less than the, our de desired orbital period, then each time the uh, the bus vehicle comes up to its apoapse will be one sixth of the way ahead of the previous satellite dropped. So we've dropped one off. Well, that, that's weird. Um, okay, we've dropped one. Now we're going to go around for one orbit, and that will put us one sixth of the way in front of the one we just dropped off. Then we drop the next one, and having trouble finding it. There it is! Ah. Alright, ComSat 2. And we'll bring its uh, orbital period up to six hours. 
Um, I understand a lot of people have trouble figuring out geostationary orbits. Um, you know, I, it's this, I think it's the same thing or the same problem that a lot of people have with orbital rendezvous. And that's, you know, you're a lot of the, I think uh, people think too hard about them. And they try to get the apoapse and periapse perfectly circular. Nah, you don't have to do that. Just get them close. And the important thing is getting your orbital period exactly right. Um, and what will happen is even if the periapse and apoapse aren't perfect, every time it comes around to that point, it'll do so exactly six hours later. <clears throat> so it'll come around to the same point every single time. <coughs> oh, excuse me, the air quality is terrible here lately. It's killing me. Anyway, oh, so we've dropped the last of our satellites from this mission off, and this is this big boy is called a pipeline satellite, and it's got two uh, two big dish arrays. We'll point one at the moon, and we'll point the other one at Minmus, and what that will do is all we have to do with a uh, with a mission around Minmus or uh, or the moon is point our dish back at Kerbin. And those pipeline dishes will pick up the signal and relay them around back to mission control uh, with the other ComSat satellites. And we might as well dispose of our, up, our spent upper stage. We don't need the bus anymore. And Holy cow, did I overbuild this thing. I think, uh, I think when we launch our next bus vehicle up here, we're going to cut down on the, on the size of the launch vehicle a bit. Maybe cut the upper stage in half and cut a little bit of fuel off the main stage. And let's see how well this thing... Deadly reentry is loaded, by the way. Let's see how well this thing fares dumping, jumping through the atmosphere without a heat shield. Whoa! And it's gone already. Not well at all. <laughs> That's vapor. All right. One week later, we've got the next mission ready to launch. And away we go, and we are going to follow the exact same very steep profile, and you don't need to see that, and watch me do that in detail again, so we're just going to jump through the highlights real quick, went down to the main stage burner, and we're just about to kick down to the, kick the uh, bus vehicle stage. Oh, boy, look at <laughs> And I still think this thing is overbuilt. <laughs> and we cut a good uh, eight or nine tons of fuel off off of it. Well, if I had it to do over again, I'd, have made, I'd make it even smaller. But once we get the comms network up, there's no reason to launch any, any more commsats up here. Because, yeah... This is Kerbal Space Program. We don't really have to worry about these things wearing out or or uh, run, or becoming obsolete. They'll pretty much stay up here forever, uh, and they've each one's got enough uh, fuel on board to last it. Right. Uh, I don't know. A, a good long time anyway. But here we are now. Uh, Let's see, we gotta. We started at basically at the same position we started last time, so we gotta go three orbits around, and I think we're gonna adjust our orbit period about ten minutes, so we uh, retard down a little bit because we're a little ahead of the other satellites. And there, and that puts us in near perfect position to start releasing the other three satellites. Okay, we drop the first one. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I'm having a terrible time. Skip up to the Apple apps and then burn with the RCS. Uh, I switched to the RCS instead of the uh, the ant motors, even though it's less efficient. Because um, you got a little better control for fine tune tuning these things. The ion engine would be even better 
as far as fine tuning, but now yeah, the problem with ion engines is they are bloody heavy. I usually reserve those for my interplanetary probes. Let's see, let's switch that to a ship so it's easier to identify. And now it's just a matter of doing the exact same thing we just did. Uh, every time we come around to our uh, Apple Apps point, we drop another satellite and circularize its orbit at six hours. And there it is, got it. <laughs> We're getting a bit of debris out here. I hope that doesn't hit one of the satellites someday. I suppose it could, but you know, what are you going to do? I didn't really want to want to leave them on the satellites because I didn't know how much fuel it was going to require to circularize their orbits. But I mean, look at how much they've got left. I needn't have worried. All right, get set up for our last drop. And just like last time, we're going to ditch the uh, the, bu the bus vehicle into the Kerbin's atmosphere when its mission is done. Uh, no sense in leaving it up here to hit something. Okay, and we'll move it out of the way and activate the... Oop, hey. Oh, man, it cuts the throttle when you switch, switch vehicles. Uh, that's a chip. Oh, well. And we'll go ahead and get our our second pipeline satellite uh, set up in orbit and two uh, two pipelines set up 180 out from each other at this distance basically will give us round the clock coverage of uh, of both the moon and minmus um now if, uh, if we ever have to expand this to you know for longer range communications I think I'm gonna set up ground sat ground stations instead of uh, more satellites and we'll use the existing satellites in orbit to relay the communications around that way but uh, there we are now let's <laughs> dispose of our uh, our second uh, spent stage in a suitable manner and see how well it fares. We're going to come in a little shallower than last time. I have a feeling it's not going to make much difference. Probably because this is all post-commentary and I've seen this before. We'll be hitting. There we go. <laughs> oh, getting hot, getting hot. Oh, she's burning. And oof. There we go. Man, I have really got to upgrade my computer just to get the nice, flamey effects. Oh, well, I'm working on it. I'm putting money aside. Anyway, there we go. One complete communications network with round-the-clock coverage of both Moon and Minmus. That's it for this episode. See everyone next time. Ciao.